I've read all your books, Mr. Neal. The book deals with a murder committed with an old-fashioned open razor, right? This girl, too, was killed with a razor, and your book's pages stuffed into her mouth. Can I ask you something? If someone is killed with a Smith & Wesson revolver, do you go and interview the president of Smith & Wesson? Peter, Peter, you can't let me down now. We're within two days of making a deal. Please, stay just until Friday. My life is in danger. There's no deal in the world worth risking my life for. Not anxiety or fear, but freedom. You wrote those words, page 46. Freedom to strike again, Peter. Listen, don't hang up. We have to talk. You told me how, Peter Neal. You and me together. We've just begun. <laughs> Come on, hurry! Oh, yeah. You'll be okay. Oh. We've got to get out of here. The guy, the guy, guy has an axe. Could it be somebody I know? Damn. I wish I'd never written that book. You don't mean that. I've made charts. I've tried building a plot the same way you have. I've tried to figure it out, but I just have this hunch that something is missing. Tiny piece of a jigsaw. Somebody who should be dead is alive, or somebody who should be alive is already dead. Explain that. You know, there's a sentence in a Conan Doyle book. When you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. Ah! Ah!